I know you are a father to twin daughters. Um, what is what is your teaching in your house look like? And I ask you this for a reason. Uh, you know, bringing up daughters in the 21st or 22nd century that we're in now, a lot of the values have changed. A lot of, you know, what the world deems as acceptable uh, in terms of women in, in, you know, how they should well, be the skills. The values are, so, you, go ahead, remember, I'm sorry. Remember when, I'll give you a quick example. Remember when Chris Rock said, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago, every man's goal for his daughters is to keep his daughter off the pole. Remember that joke? Absolutely. Like, nowadays, he you could get canceled for saying that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like he really, that was that's how how much things have changed. Is that if he said that today, many people might go at him and say that was offensive. Okay, I'll take it one better. Uh, you know, Steve Harvey wrote a best-selling book, uh, Think Like a Man But Act Like a Woman. His daughter is now hashtag goals by so many other young girls. Um, I'm not quite sure that, that that's what he intended when he wrote his book, but... <laughs> Right. It's one thing right. for for a third party, Chris Rock, saying, you know, something that that would get him in trouble today. But it's a whole other thing that women are moving man to man and it's considered goals. So, again, I ask you because you have two daughters like right. and you're a man of faith. What does what does. Well, your my daughter, in that house look like. Yeah, my man, my daughters will turn 23 next week. Mm -hmm. So now they're both, they graduated from college in May. They're on their own, both are working and living on their own, but they're, they're in the New York area. One's in Brooklyn, one's in Connecticut. And we see them, we're blessed to see them every few weeks, but they are out on their own. But in terms of raising them, um, our goal, and as you said, I mean, we're a house of faith, you know, and, and it was my job as the man of the house, the leader of the house, to establish that faith. And my goal always was for them to see uh, Christ in my life and my wife's life, just as like a lifestyle. Like Sunday, yes, we went to church on Sunday, but it wasn't like, oh, Sundays are our day to be with God. No, it was just a lifestyle in our house. And that's what I wanted them to see. So we would do devotionals, Bible studies every couple of weeks, maybe. Um, but we would go to church and, you know, it was just a constant part of our life. And not to the point where we were in church all the time, because I, I don't like being in church three, four or five days a week. I don't, I go on Sunday. You know, and that's most for the most part it. So I'm not saying we got to be in church all the time, but just the Christian mentality and Christ like lifestyle was something I wanted to show them. Um, so, you know, I, I like with music, a lot of the music they would hear me playing or listening to was Christian music. Not that I didn't listen to other kinds of music, but Christian music that was like R&B. Christian R&B or Christ, like Mary Mary or Kirk Franklin or mm -hmm. Christian house music, Christian rap music. Like there's all types of stuff out there. And so they heard that and that reinforces that it's a lifestyle. And so some there was some of that. Um, and we talked openly. Like I talked openly with them about dating, about sex, about drugs, alcohol, things like that from a godly perspective so it was i was very open with them and i always wanted like i you know you have to walk that fine line because i didn't want to be too strict where when they left the house to go to college they just went buck wild because they uh -huh. got the freedom right but i didn't want to be too lax where anything goes and they just out there wilding you know so you have to walk that fine line as a parent particularly today 
And so I was always, I wanted to keep the lines of communication open. So if I ever heard them say anything that inside I'm like bugging, you know, <laughs> I didn't show it on the outside. I would be, oh, okay, so what do you mean? You know what I mean? So we talk about that. Um, sometimes when music that, you know, they would listen to and I would, sometimes I would talk to them about the lyrics, you know, and well, what do you think he's saying or she's saying and what do you think about that? And give them my perspective, but in a, you know, not in a, uh, an overriding way, but just talking with them about it. So it, it's, look, it's a 24 seven job. And um, I was very involved in my daughter's lives. And like I said, just keeping the lines of communication open to talk about all these various things. And um, so that's kind of how, you know, it, it went with us and, Part of what helps me live the life I talk about is knowing that, you know, the example I'm trying to set for them. So they've been hearing me tell them about Jesus my whole life. And if I was out there running around on their mother or, you know, beating up their mother or something like that, I that would have impact their faith. They're like, man, you've been telling us about God your whole life and you was out here sleeping around. And you know what I mean? Like, and so that is a is one of the things that also helps keep me in line. And a lot of times you hear Christians say, well, don't look at me, look at God, you know, ain't and those, but that's not Paul. The apostle Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. So he wasn't passing the buck. Don't, don't look at my life. I, you know, and I'm not saying we perfect or I'm perfect. We make mistakes, but we shouldn't be, as Christians, we shouldn't be afraid to say, follow me as I follow Christ. You know, and God, Christ empowers us to live according to his teachings to the best we can. When you make a mistake, you repent for it. You know, I wasn't afraid sometimes to say I'm sorry to my daughters or I made a mistake, you know. Um, you know, we and, and I did spank them. Now, they were good, you know, when they were really little, I don't know, four years old, whatever, I spanked them. And they didn't, from that, you know, really they didn't deserve spankings most of their time, you know, so it was good. But I do believe in, you know, being the authority figure to your children. Because there's, you know, and, and you're the parent. They're the children. And to society, you talk about the change in values. Like now they want to act like there's no difference between the parent and the child. And if the child comes and tells you this, they want to do this. They want to be this. You just have to go along with it. No. Parenting is teaching your children, molding your children, putting values in your children and not letting them do whatever the heck they want to do. You know? And uh, so that's, I guess that's kind of how we parented. And today, you know, we got good relationships with our daughters. One of them's here now. And um, so we, we've been blessed. We've been blessed. Well, I, I think it's a huge blessing, um, number one, for any man uh, to, to, to be in their daughter's life. Um, it's, it's always a great blessing when, you know, there's a two family household. Um, and they and get you know what else I did? A couple things like my and today still I talk to my daughters or they, as, as they've dated men, they've called me or asked me for advice. Sometimes one of my daughters said last week we were talking, she was like, I wanted a man's opinion. You know, I want I didn't tell mommy this yet, but I wanted a man's viewpoint on this. Um, and that's great to hear, you know, and, and I, when they, yeah, and you, I, you I built a lot of trust over the years, right? And they, they started dating, you know, I let them date at 16, 17, whatever it was, 16, I think. And I wanted them to date. Like I didn't want, I wanted them to not be awkward socially. You know, I wanted them to understand and be comfortable around boys. Um, but I wanted boundaries, you know what I'm saying? But I, I, I wanted them to date, but with boundaries. And I would meet the boys, any boys they went out with, I took that boy out to Starbucks or something and talked to him. And like, yo, um, 
my daughters, they, you know, just get to know them. Mm-hmm. But we raise our daughters with certain values. You know, they're Christians. And uh, we teach them, you know, that sex is for marriage. And, you know, I mean, all this stuff. I don't want my daughters, uh, you know, uh, forced or pressured into doing anything, something they don't want to do. And and I thought about it, and not that they were perfect, but I'm just saying, I thought about that. If a, if a father had done that with me, before I went out with his daughter, or as I was dating his daughter, it would have had a big impact on me. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.